H R C H R C H R C Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church. Shout out to the Chalam family. We greet you in the name of Ahaya Shere Ahaya. We welcome you to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Zach Wall, and it's your brother Kasafo. We have another exciting lesson for everybody. Christian men's appearance. This is the last lesson for the men's series, and after that we'll be transitioning on to the women's series, the Dollars of Zion. So we hope everybody's been enjoying the lessons. Um, we hope Allah has been taking care of everybody this week. And Brother Kasafo, you got anything before we get going? Praise the Lord. Hope this helps. All right. So, praise the Praise the If there's any questions or comments, please send us an email to HebrewReaders at gmail.com. If there's any questions about any topics that we're talking about on this lesson or the previous lessons throughout the men's series, please write a comment in the comment section below so that we can answer it. Ahaya, be grace. And then we hope you all enjoy the lesson. Brother Kasafo? All right. Let's get into it. Men's garments. According to the scriptures, men's clothing are not permitted to be effeminate and or a woman's garment. We are not to wear that which pertains to women. Uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 5, please. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto a higher than Elohim. So the simplicity of that is if we're in a store and there's the women's section and there's women's pants, those garments aren't for us. We have to go find the men's pants. That's a man's garment. That's the simplicity of it. Hopefully that helps. Uh, of course, effeminate clothing is for women. We don't wear that because we're men. All right. So if there is effeminate clothing in the man's section, let's refrain from getting that. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Because the, right. the world we're in right now <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. The clothing they're making, some things are effeminate and they're claiming it's for men. Right. So that lets us know if it looks womanly, it's not for us. Right. All right. Men's clothing ought to be modest in apparel as examples of believers. Men must be mindful not to set stumbling blocks for women or others by wearing garments that promote promiscuity. Uh, can you read Romans chapter 14, verse 13, please? Sure. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But justice rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So an example of that, a man, some men, work out, keep yourself in shape. Don't wear clothes that are promoting your your physique in order to allure a young woman. Knowing that sisters have their own struggles to overcome, let's be mindful and wear garments that are modest and would help the next person. All right? We are called to be example of believers, so things like this helps us set the example. Can you read First Timothy chapter four, verse twelve, please? Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation, in charity, in spirit, and faith, in purity. And so, hopefully, that helps us to be examples. We men are called to be strong in the faith, to play the man. So we have to be the affirmative of the week where an example in clothing, in respect of clothing, like the decision between wearing a crew neck T-shirt or a V-neck T-shirt, which one is more suitable to help others? A crew neck T-shirt, because it's not revealing for a good example. Um, Romans chapter 15, verse 1 to 3, please. We then that are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Amen. So, next topic, jewelry. There are no laws that restrict men from wearing jewelry. You have the priest garments have jewels all over, even the 12 stones for the tribes of Israel, for example. 
And then there's even an example in the New Testament of a church attendee with his ring on. Can you read James chapter 2, verse 2, please? For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. Notice the man had on a gold ring to see that jewelry was lawful to wear. And concerning piercing the flesh. Because so, some jewelry requires piercings like nose rings and earrings. Um, men can wear piercings as well, like earrings, by evidence of the Israelites wearing them and the practice of piercing the ears of the servants in, in the law. Can you read Exodus 21 and 6, please? Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door and unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Can you read Exodus chapter 32, verse 2, please? Yes. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. So we see men and women were wearing earrings. Also, goodly apparel is lawful to wear. Because we're dressing modestly doesn't mean we can't dress nicely. All right? Now, concerning tattoos. Tattoos are against the law, as it is written in Leviticus 19 and 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. And the word marks in the Hebrew is H7085. And the definition for the Browners Briggs is an incision. Imprintment, tattoo, mark. So it's very straight that it's referring to tattoos. If one already has tattoos, come unto Allah as you are, yet sin no more. For your baptism into Yachi was for the remission of former sins, as Romans chapter 3 verse 25 says. So there's no need to turn to a carnal element of seeking to be justified in the flesh by removing the tattoos when you've already been justified in the spirit by the blood of the son of Allah to purge the conscience from dead works. Now, going into the appearance of our heads or our hairstyles. Okay, the scriptures show different hairstyles among the sins of Israel. Can we look at Judges chapter 16, verse 13, to see one of the hairstyles, please? And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou wavest the seven locks of my head with the web, the word locks there is age 4253, and it means braid, lock, plait, a ringlet of hair. Now, the word locks is used in this verse to show that is the proper context of the word use in this verse, whereas plate is used in verses like Peter 3 and 3 as it pertains to women. So that's literally dreads as we know them today. This is what men wear. There's nothing wrong with that. Can you read Numbers 6 and 5, please? All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days be fulfilled, in the which he separated himself unto Ahiah. He shall be holy, and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. So you let your dreads grow as you see fit, so long as you're not rounding the sides of your head. Also, people wear the natural afro, low cuts or wave cuts or the even all arounds or loose hairdo. Because men had natural hairstyles that they could use a comb on because it wasn't locked up with dreads. Like in Joseph's case in the book of Joshua who had an afro. But they didn't let their hair grow long like that because it would be a shame unto a man to have long hair unless it was locked up with dreads like the Nazarites who can let their locks grow long. Let's look at that in Jasher chapter 44 verse 20 it says and she said unto him how very beautiful is the hair of thy head behold the golden comb which is in the house take it I pray thee and curl the hair of thy head so you can see that he had a afro that he could comb through so we can know that men actually had their natural hair their afros as an option for hairdo now, mind you, this Egyptian woman was tempting Joseph to curl his hair, as that's something for women. As men, when we change the afro, we lock it up with dreads, just for edification on that. 
Now, the definition of the word hair is H8181 in the sense of disheveling, hair as if tossed or bristling. So it's talking about like having an afro, your natural hair. So we can know that men can have afros, low cuts, even all arounds or, you know, their regular hairdo. It's just if they want to let their hair grow long, they have to lock it up with dreads to let it grow long or else it's going to be a shame onto them to have their long natural hair without it being locked up. For further edification on that, you can visit the website tab. When you hit uh, Simplicity for Men, it's a tab called Men's Hairstyle and Grooming where you can get an understanding of men's hair length. All right. And also for the sons of Israel and for the Levites, they wear bald heads as well, if they will. You have Jacob, for example, in Jasher 54, 107, please. And Jacob rose up and put on the garments which Joseph had sent him. And after he had washed and shaved his hair, he put upon his head the turban which Joseph had sent him. All right. We saw he shaved his hair and also Absalom did it in can you read Second Samuel 14 and 26, please? And when he pulled his head, for it was at every year's end that he pulled it, because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. Now, though the word says pulled in the English, in the Hebrew, the word is 1548, and that means properly to be bald, that is, causatively to shave. So he actually shaved his head. So you see that wearing the ball head, it was common among the Israelites as well. The laws concerning men's grooming vary for the sons of Israel as opposed to the sons of Aaron, the priests. The house of Israel and the priests are commanded not to round the corners of their heads. So they may not make the size of their heads bald alone to encircle it. Can you read Leviticus 19 and 27, please? You shall not round the corners of your heads. From this commandment, the word round from H5362, some of the definitions are by implication to knock together, that is to surround or circulate. So it's telling of surrounding, circulating our heads, that is to cut down or destroy. So it's talking about cutting it low, cutting it down, or even bald. And the word corners in the Hebrews H6285, the definition is properly mouth in a figurative sense. That is direction, region, extremity, corner and quarter side. So what is it explaining is very simply what it says. You shall not round the corners of your heads, the sides of your head is you shall not round. The law does not restrict the sons of Israel and the Levites from cutting down their entire heads to be bald, even as Jacob did and Absalom did as well. Rather, it just shows that it is unlawful to cut down the sides of the head bald to encircle it like when people get haircuts like the fades, the temp fades, the mohawks and flat tops. For the sons of Israel and the Levites, they, they can, can still do lineups, tape ups and edge ups with any instrument that can cause baldness like razors or edgers because that's not rounding the size of your heads or the ends of your heads when you straighten the hairline with any instrument that can cause baldness like razors or edgers. The scriptures show different hairstyles among the sons of Israel and the Levites. They can wear their hair in an afro or a regular low cut. Or they can wear dreads without balding the sides of their head. The key in the law is make sure we don't bald the sides of our heads alone to round it. Yet, they are allowed by the law to bald their whole head completely, if they will. So these are the options for the sons of Israel and the Levites. Now, for the law for the priests with head grooming, when I say priests, is referring to the sons of Aaron, not all the Levites. Okay? The law for the priests, the sons of Aaron, are different from the laws for the Levites and the rest of the tribes of Israel. They are not permitted to bawl their heads because the law in Leviticus 21 and 5 had said, they shall not make baldness upon their head. So that's the difference for the sons of Aaron. They're not allowed to bawl their heads at all, nor suffer their locks to grow long. 
but have to keep a respectable hairline by polling their heads. This means they can have afros, dreads, or low cuts. Trimming their hair and shaping their heads up for neatness with clippers that do not make baldness upon their heads or hairlines. They may not shave their heads with any instrument to make baldness upon their heads or hairlines at all in respect of the law, so they can't use any instrument that causes baldness to get a bald head, a line up, a edge up, a shape up, or tape up because that would be making baldness in their head. They shall not make baldness on the sides of their heads either, like mohawks, fades, temp fades, and flat tops. And also, can you read Ezekiel 44, verse 20, please? Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. This is the understanding of the law. Sons of Aaron cannot shave your heads bald. Neither let your dreads grow long. You can only poll your heads. The definition for the word poll is in H3697. That word means to shear. That shearing is like when people shear sheep, they don't shave it completely. They just trim it down. By English definition, poll means to clip, to cut off the ends, to cut off hair or wool, to shear, to mow, to crop. So hopefully that helps understand for the sons of Aaron, is not allowed to bald the heads nor shave their heads so they can trim their hair and shape their heads up for neatness with clippers that do not make baldness upon their heads or hairlines or let the hair grow and get braids dreads whatever one desires just can't let it grow long and they are artifacts even the assyrians the images they made of the israelites when you look at them you see the priests they had dreads but all their hair was cut to a certain length to make sure they didn't let their dreads grow long as the law commands for them, All right? Now, edification on lineups and edge-ups and tape-ups and ball heads. A shape-up or lineup or edge-up or tape-up is literally the removal, that is the shaving of hair by razor or clipper to ball the area in order to make the edges of the hairline appear sharp and straight. This is not a transgression of the law for the sons of Israel and the Levites, but the priests are commanded not to make baldness on their heads in Leviticus 21 and 5. So that means the sons of Aaron can only shape their heads with clippers that don't make baldness. The house of Israel and the Levites were just commanded not to round the corners of their heads, which means not to cut down the edges of their heads, like temp fades. So a shape up, a line up, or edge up, or a tape up, will not cause them to transgress the law. Continuing. Now, the appearance of facial hair is lawful for Israelites, including the priests, to shave, trim, or line up their mustache because there's no law prohibiting the grooming of one's mustache. The laws pertaining to facial hair in Leviticus 19 and 27 and Leviticus 21 and 5 use the word H2206, which means beard or the chin, because it actually pertains to the beard. On the other hand, there is another word that pertains to the mustache in H8222, which means mustache beard as a lip upper piece or the upper lip, the beard. So we can know that there are two different words when it comes to the beard and the mustache to know what's lawful for us. And you can look at those definitions in your Hebrew lexicon or online at your leisure. Now, the priests, the sons of Aaron, must be mindful not to cut themselves, which would be a transgression of the law, since for the sons of Aaron in Leviticus 21 and 5, it said, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. The use of trimmers or clippers will aid in making sure one doesn't cut oneself. Now, edification on beards. It is lawful for the Israelites, including the priests, to trim their beard. As an example, we can find in 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 24, it shows that the Hebrews were trimming their beards lawfully of old time and grooming themselves was a common practice amongst them. Can you read 2 Samuel 19 and 24, please? And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes. 
from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. The English definition of the word trim is to make something neat or of required size or form by cutting away irregular or unwanted parts. So that helps understand that the Israelites, they kept themselves well groomed. And that is a practice that we ought to maintain. It's a righteous thing to do. Now, the laws concerning beards, there are variations in the law concerning the grooming of the beards for the Israelites and the priests, respectively. It is lawful for Israelites, including Levites, to line up and trim their beards. They just can't make it completely bald on the sides or ends to mar it. It is not lawful to have a clean shaven face, nor a goatee with shaven sides, nor just the sides of the beard with the chin shaved. These different styles would cause them to mar, that is to destroy the corners of their beards, which is against the law. Can you read Leviticus 19 and 27 again, please? You shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. The word mar, it's 7843. Some of the definitions are ruin. Uh, also destroy, mar, waste, to decay. What the word mar is explaining is you can't destroy the beard completely for the sons of Israel and the Levites. That's why it's lawful to line it up because that's not destroying it completely. You still have a beard. You know, you can design it as you like. It's just you cannot put baldness in the beard by like shaving off the sides completely and just keeping the beard. And then you've marred the corners of your beard. You've destroyed the sides. Hopefully that helps give an understanding of it. All right, I think that does. It's now the sons of Aaron, on the other hand, the law says for them, can you read Leviticus 21 and 5 again, please? They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Notice the difference. The sons of Aaron are not allowed to shave off the corner of their beard. As opposed to the Israelites, they're not allowed to mar the corners of their beard. So they can still do stuff too, but the sons of Aaron can't shave their beard at all. And when you read the definition of shave, it's age 1548, and it means to be bald, causatively to shave. Knowing that the law restricts the sons of Aaron from shaving the corners of their beard, nor make any baldness on the sides of their beards, that helps know that they can trim their beards and shape them up with clippers that do not make baldness upon their beards. They may not shave any part of their beards with any instrument that can cause baldness, such as razors. They may, however, shave their mustache with any shaving instrument as there is no law restricting the shaving of the mustache. All right. Now, for the children of Ahaya altogether, none of the children of Ahaya, regardless of nation, may make any baldness on their eyebrows for the dead. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1, please? Ye are the children of Ahaya, Yalahayim. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. This means a man may line or design his eyebrows for grooming so long as he is not making them bald completely for the dead. The scriptures in regards to balding the eyebrows completely as opposed to lining or designing the eyebrows for grooming as the definition for baldness in H7144 says baldness and utterly as definitions to help us understand this law in Deuteronomy is in regards to making the eyebrows completely bald that's against the law unless it's for cleansing of a leper but not when it pertains to designing the eyebrows for grooming, which is lawful. Be sure not to ball the eyebrows completely to draw on eyebrows for grooming as well, because the practice of balling the eyebrows completely is a practice for the dead according to the law. So be sure not to ball your eyebrows completely for any reason aside from the cleansing requirements of leprosy. Now, all these laws we just went over, the house of Israel, all the tribes, including Aaron's children, are called by name to keep the whole law. Hence, we are obligated to do these things. Can you read 2 Chronicles chapter 33, verse 8, please? Neither will I any more remove the foot 
of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they would take heed to do all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So we have to take heed to all that we've been commanded, according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. And we're also told to remember the law of Moses. Can you read Malachi 4 and 4, please? Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Now, this is interesting because he gave Moses that law in Horeb, right? All right. That was him coming down on Sinai and all that, right? All right. Can you read Sirach 17, verse 11 to 14, please? Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. He made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgments. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory and their ears heard his glorious voice. And he said unto them, Beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. So the things that we were taught helps us beware of all unrighteousness. And he also gave us commandments concerning our neighbor. Now, for our brethren, the Gentiles, your father Noah, and ours, because we come from him too, <laughs> commanded us to observe righteousness. Can we read Jubilee chapter 7, verse 20, please? And in the 28th Jubilee, Noah began to enjoin upon his son, son, the ordinances and commandments and all the judgments that he knew. And he exhorted his son to observe righteousness and to cover the shame of their flesh and to bless their creator and honor father and mother and love their neighbor and guard their souls from fornication and uncleanness and all iniquity. Notice Noah enjoined his son's ordinances, commandments, and judgments that he knew. Yet, we know more was revealed to Moses at a later time. In order to absorb righteousness, one needs to know the law, because it was through the law that Ahia showed the children of Israel how to beware of all unrighteousness, right. as we read in Sirach 17 and 14. Noah exhorted his children to observe righteousness. This is letting us know that Noah was preparing his children to obey the commandments that would be given to Moses from what he exhorted them to do. And he was also preparing them to bear the fruits of the Spirit because the fruits of the Spirit is in all righteousness as well. Hopefully this helped for the brethren of the Gentiles to know these laws that were going over about our appearance and our grooming and how we are to operate. These refer to you as well, brothers, because your father Noah commanded that you observe righteousness and it's through the law of Allah that you can beware of all unrighteousness to do as your father commanded. And you can also confirm that Noah was preparing his children for the law because he said, honor father and mother and love their neighbor. And it's through the commandments that were given to Moses according to Sirach 17 and 14 and Ahiah said, and he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. These are the commandments that was needed and that Noah was preparing his children for. So through preset, we see that Noah was preparing his children to observe these commandments that were given to Moses because Ahia taught us to beware of all unrighteousness through the law given to him. Now we can look in the New Testament to see that the apostles and the people of that time understood that the commandments given to Moses was not an issue for the Gentiles to keep because they were hearing the law every Sabbath. Jumping into Acts 15, the issue among the people in the New Testament was the people were trying to tell the Gentiles they needed to be circumcised and keep the animal sacrifice in order to be saved. And that was what led about to the discussion that came. Can you read um, where we can see that that was the issue? Acts 15 and 5, please. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. When we read the rest of what happened, we're going to see that the law of Moses in that verse was not referring to the actual commandments. All right? 
Can you read Acts 15, verse 18, 19, 21, and 28 to see James' response to the discussion, please? All right, Acts 15 and 18. Known unto Elohim are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to Elohim. Notice, he said, don't trouble them. It would be a trouble to require them to be circumcised to be saved and to require them to keep the sacrifices to be saved. That would be troubling unto them. Now, we don't need to trouble them. Also, it was not an issue about them keeping the commandments because what does verse 21 say in Acts 15? For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. They were hearing the commandments. That was not something that they needed to know because they were hearing it every Sabbath. Yet the things that were needful to help them were spoken of in Acts 15 and 28, please, and 9. For it seemed good Sorry. to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye right. abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. That was the addition. You have the law of Moses being read to you every Sabbath day, so you know the commandments which will help you do what your father Noah told you to do and you have good all your days because you're also observing righteousness by obeying the commands of Moses. So hopefully that helps for the brethren of the Gentiles to know these laws are for you too. Ahaya is the Alahayam of all. So the laws through faith are established through Yache for all nations. And these laws for all of us would be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Ahaya, our Alahayam. Can you read Deuteronomy 6 and 25, please? And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Ahaya, our Alahayam, as he hath commanded us. These are prophetic times for preparation of the kingdom because all nations will be joined together in one law and one covenant in the reign of Christ Yache. And you read Gad the Seer, chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, please. For everyone would join you in the covenant of the law, testimony, statutes, and ordinances. And you and they shall have one Elohim, one covenant, one law, one language. For all shall speak in the Jews' language, the holy language. Praise the Lord, Yahshua. Hope this was edifying and good for everyone to get understanding of how Christian men's appearance ought to be. All right. We hope everybody enjoyed the lessons. We hope everybody enjoyed the men's series. We are going to be continuing on to the women's series um, coming up next Sabbath today, higher willing. Um, if you have any questions about anything in the men's series, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. Uh, or write us in one of the comment sections of the videos, and we'll we'll definitely try to get back to you at our, at our earliest convenience. Um, other than that, we hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their Shabbat day, and I keep you through this week that we're about to go through. Uh, Brother Kasper, you got anything you want to add? I did. One last thing for understanding for all nations that these laws concerning our grooming and our parents is for everyone because Second Timothy three sixteen and 17 said, all scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Remember Noah told his children, observe righteousness. <laughs> that the man of Elohim may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So this is for us all and will enable us all to keep the commandments of our fathers. All right. Let's have to tell them, everybody. HRC, 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 HRC,